If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Frugal Filmmaker Tip of the Month. Now you might be wondering after reading my blog why I'm having a Tip of the Month episode on the first Wednesday of the month opposed to the third Wednesday, which is when I said I was going to start releasing these. The first Wednesday should have an actual Frugal Filmmaker episode, the full-blown thing. Um, but considering I'm in grad school right now and I'm being slammed with homework and finals, I decided to move the tip of the month to the first Wednesday, at least this month, and the actual episode of the third Wednesday so that I would have time to do both. Um, just to tease you a little bit and tell you what's coming up is the uh, actual episode is going to feature a suction cup, suction cup mount for your camera. So that's what's coming up in a couple weeks. But right now I want to talk about a topic everybody likes. And that's guns. Yes, we're going to talk about airsoft uh, props. And I realize there's been a thousand tutorials about using uh, airsoft props. And I'm just going to kind of add my two cents because I have used these a few times and have a few observations that might help you make your video production more realistic when using these. Um, now, this is about a $50 gas blowback airsoft gun. If you don't know what airsoft is, they shoot BBs. But they're perfect for movies because they look incredibly realistic. They have realistic uh, actions. Like so, the clips drop out and put them back. Um, and they just, they just look amazing and a lot of them aren't that expensive. This one's 50 bucks because it features gas blowback, which is when you charge it in this hole right here with propane and you shoot it, the slide moves back like a real gun. No shell ejects, but it gives you a cue on your video where to put the muzzle flash and smoke in post-production. If you don't know how to do that, check out Freddie Wong or Corridor Digital guys. Um, they're masters at that, and I'm still learning about a lot of this stuff. But anyway, so you have this pistol. This is a more expensive uh, Beretta replica. Um, gas blowback, as I said. Then you have stuff like this, which is a $5 Springer pistol. Has some of the same features. You can rack the slide. Uh, you can remove the clip. It looks cool. I like this kind of thing on front here, on the front here. Um, but it just doesn't do as much and doesn't have that blowback feature. But you can always, you know, fake it in order to put the muzzle flash like so. Um, but one thing you always want to do when you're using any kind of uh, prop firearms is alert law enforcement. So the neighbors don't call the cops on you and they show up and arrest you and ask you where your uh, firearms permit is and take you off to jail and ruin your movie. So always make sure you tell everybody what you're doing. Another thing you have to be aware of is uh, the orange tip on the end. It's federal law that mandates these props have orange tips. So if somebody does see you, it's obviously uh, fake and they don't shoot you. Um, but one thing about these tips, because you're obviously gonna paint them or wrap tape around them or whatever, is to beware of the close-up. A real popular shot is to you know point the gun right into the camera or right past the camera, because it looks cool. But be careful when you're using airsoft guns because if that orange tip pokes out through the paint or you get nick it get, gets nicked and shows up or whatever, it's gonna look fake. It's gonna drop you out of the movie. So be careful about that and whatever you're using. Um, I was fortunate on this one here because it was actually uh, painted orange and I can get rid of the orange paint with some alcohol, I believe, or some acetone um, to make it uh, definitely realistic. No, you'll never see any orange on this tip because it doesn't exist. Uh, another thing is you always want to make sure that you fake the weight. If the gun doesn't have an actual weight to it because it's so light, like this one, uh, make sure that you kind of fake it. This doesn't really apply to mu as much to the pistols because they already have kind of a natural weight. But if you're using something like an assault rifle, like this one, this G36 replica, uh, it probably weighs a couple pounds, but the real thing would weigh five to seven. So fake it, you know, give it some heft. I let somebody borrow this one time, uh, an actress, and they're waving it around with one arm and it just looked terrible because there's no way you'd be able to do that with the real thing. I mean, so pretend that it's heavy. Um, and you'll be fine. So let's talk a little bit about this. Like I said, it's, in a, it's a G36 replica. It has you know, a rackable slide. It's a Springer, so it's only about $20 or less. Uh, it has these clips that come out. It looks really cool. And the whole thing looks really good. You got a little accessory rail here on the front. You can attach a light to. It's got, it comes with a cheap, fake, non-working red dot sight, but it looks good. Um, so let's talk about uh, the magazines here. One thing I liked about this model was that you could actually go on Hobbytron's website. I stumbled across how they were blowing out these replacement clips for a dollar. So I bought a bunch of them because I discovered, well I guessed, and I was right, that I could actually open up the clips and break apart these fake rounds that you see through the clips and give yourself different loadouts. And here's a fully loaded magazine. Here's one that's half loaded. 
and here's one that's completely empty. So as you're progressing in your movie, you can actually have your characters uh, have firearms that have apparently uh, ammunition running low. So that can add to a, a touch of realism. Another thing is, is the, the technique of carrying the weapon. Always have your finger outside the trigger guard. You probably see this a lot, you know, where your finger is outside of the trigger guard. You should only put it down here when you're actually ready to shoot the firearm. Um, but this, it's so commonplace to see people moving around now in video games and movies that this should be a no brainer. You should just study movies and video games and see how soldiers and police move with these. But you know, make it look realistic, hold it up in a tactical position, shooting from the hip. I don't know, I mean, that's very 80s, but anyway, just try and make it look as realistic as you can. Fake the weight, you know, use the uh, uh, ammunition running out in your clip and stuff like that and you can make it look really good. Uh, another thing that I found is these. This is an actual dud hand grenade. Grenade! They're real. I mean, they're really made out of metal. Um, and they look really great. They have a nice weight to them, so you can throw them like a baseball. And they'll actually go somewhere, opposed to like a plastic one. Um, but they have this hole in the bottom. This is how you can tell it's a dud, is that the explosive has been drained out through this hole. And that's actually really cool because you know it's safe unless of course you get hit on the head. That would really hurt. Um, but at the same time, I've seen several YouTube videos from professional YouTubers that expose this hole. I mean, if you're gonna throw the thing, um, at least you know edit it to where you're not gonna see that hole when it lands because it's an obvious sign that it's fake and it's huge. I mean, the thing looks like the Death Star. Um, or do something else like take some duct tape that's silver in color and cover that hole so that you can't see it because that is a dead giveaway. And you don't want anything um, dropping you out of a movie, uh, such as details that you didn't pay attention to. So there's all kinds of things you can do with these props. These are some experiences that I've had that are things that I've noticed that might help make your movie better. If not, just ignore this video and uh, wait for two weeks. Anyway, happy shooting. This has been the Frugal Filmmaker Tip of the Month.